Welcome to the webcast, Broken Bat with Corey Mansfield. Uh, this is the third part in our series, Rebuilding of a Keeper League Team. For those of you who don't know what a Keeper League is, a Keeper League is where you keep players from the previous season um, and you rebuild your team each year. Some leagues are deeper than others where you can keep you know, half your roster while some you're only allowed to keep a few players. In our league, we keep 17 of the 22. We redraft five, so we're mostly drafting rookies and free agents. Um, this year, I actually have the first overall pick because last year was very tough for me. Uh, I'm hoping to rebound this year. Um, right now on my big board, I have five running backs uh, ranked uh, in the top five. Obviously, this is a very heavy running back league. We're a PPR league, so you get points for rush uh, and also points for reception, but the rushes are a little heavier. Um, the top five on my list are number one, Giovanni Bernard, number two, Le'Veon Bell, number three, Monty Ball, number four, Eddie Lacy, and number five, Zach Stacy. Uh, I actually levy on Bell ranked number one for a long period of time. Looked like he was going to get a lot of carries in that Pittsburgh backfield. He was hurt, got back in the field against the Redskins, played a series, got hurt again, went out. Uh, there's a lot of concern in Pittsburgh so much. In fact, they actually went out and got Felix Jones, brought him in uh, to secure uh, their backfield. So it looks like Le'Veon Bell is out indefinitely. Uh, they're hoping he could come back towards the end of the, uh, mid, towards the end of the year. They're not sure yet. So uh, in a deep keeper league draft like mine, he's a safe pick, but I just don't know if he'll uh, have the lasting effect in the NFL. If he's already banged up in his first season or his first preseason, if he starts getting a lot of carries in that Pittsburgh backfield, he's going to get beat up. Uh, we saw what happened to Rashad Mendenhall. He had a couple bad or big years, and then he got hurt. So uh, it doesn't look good for Le'Veon Bell, but hopefully he can come back. Um, I put Giovanni Bernard as my number one. I really think he's an explosive running back. When he was at North Carolina, just very explosive, uh, punt returning and running the football. Um, however, he's in a uh, battle to be the running back with um, uh, Ben Jarvis Green Ellis. It looks like if he beats him out, he'll get a lot of carries in, in the backfield that needs a running back. And again, he's just very explosive. Uh, he can make a play happen any time. He's one of those guys, kind of like a Chris Johnson. Um, where he could have a big play, where he could have two carries in a game, but have 67 yards and a touchdown. Um, but I really think he's going to be more comparable to a Ray Rice, what Ray Rice did a couple years ago. So that's why I have him number one on my board. Uh, number three is Monty Ball, who's also in a uh, battle to be his starting running back on his team uh, with Ronnie Hillman. Um, that team, again, is a passing team. Uh, Peyton Manning likes to throw the ball. Uh, he's got Wes Welker this year. He's got Eric Decker. He's got Demarius Thomas. I mean, the list goes on and on. They're going to throw the ball a ton. Um, he'll get some looks, but again, how many touches are each of those guys going to get? Is Hillman going to get, you know, 65 35 with Monty Balls? So eventually going to flatten out where they're both getting 50 50, but again, they're going to be throwing the ball a lot. Um, number four is Eddie Lacy. Now, Eddie Lacy is kind of an interesting case. It's kind of ironic I'm wearing a Notre Dame shirt right now. Uh, last year in a national championship game, he actually torched the, what was considered the best front seven in college football. I mean, he made them look like rag dolls last year. And uh, again, in this preseason, he's done it again to a lot of these teams. He's just a beast. He's quick. He's fast. He's strong. Um, he's not afraid to shy away from contact, which, you know, in the end might hurt him uh, for longevity. But I like him. Um, and he's actually got, he's in the back of my head right now to possibly take first overall. But again, I don't know if Green Bay is going to trust that running game with their offensive line. Um, there's a very good chance they're going to throw the ball a ton this year. Uh, they've actually had been beat up at the running, or the wide receiver position, so they might rely early on that running game. Uh, they did take Jonathan Franklin out of USC to be the other back. So if he comes on, they could split a lot of carries. But Eddie Lacy looks like the real deal, and he could be the, the pick that a lot of people are going to overlook. Um, but again, Green Bay is going to throw the ball with the best quarterback in the NFL and Aaron Rodgers. But watch Eddie Lacy, and especially in late rounds, if you have a normal league, fantasy league, or even a very uh, a keeper league where you're drafting you know, 20 players, you know, keep an eye on Eddie Lacy, even in the early rounds, you know. I'm not saying take him with your top one of your top five picks, but he could be there in you know the round 12. Um, the other guy on the board is Zach Stacy. Uh, nobody really knows what's going to happen in St. Louis. 
It looks like uh, Daryl Richardson is going to be the back there, uh, replacing Steven Jackson, who went to Atlanta. Uh, but again, Isaiah Pete hasn't shown any promise, so Zach Stacy is going to get the second team uh, reps. Um, he could come on if Richardson gets hurt, so he's worth uh, in, in a keeper league uh, in a team that's only draft in a league that's only drafting five. I'd probably try to get him in the second round. Uh, a couple other players I've noticed um, is Christine Michael uh, in Seattle. Um, he is a beast. Uh, a few years ago in high school, he was a Walter player, a Walter Payton Player of the Year. Uh, went to A and M, got hurt um, last November, and is trying to make uh, make a name for himself in the NFL. Um, however, uh, he's got to beat out Marshawn Lynch, which isn't going to happen. Um, but again, he could be a big back if Marshawn Lynch were to go down. So in my my mind, I'm kind of going to be targeting him maybe uh, in the late second round, but I don't think he's going to be there. I think somebody's going to take him in the late first round of my keeper league draft. Now, the other guy is Marcus Lattimore. Um, obviously, a lot of you have probably saw the injury uh, when he tore his ACL last year. It was pretty ugly. Uh, the 49ers put him on the uh, non-football injury list, so he's out for at least the first six weeks. It looks like he's going to be shut down for majority of the first part of the season um, and maybe even the whole season. They really want to take their time with his injury, uh, let him heal, have him come back. He is going to be their apparent to Franco, or there's no other way around. He's going to be their featured back eventually. Um, so this is going to be a steal. If you have an open roster spot where you have a couple running backs that you can use week to week and you can have a spot where you can just let, leave, let him sit, for the whole season on IR, I would do it and just take him and let him sit there. And you know, in a couple of years or next year, you you know, it'll pay huge dividends. You you'll have basically uh, what I think would be another first round pick on your team. Um, so those are the running backs. Um, the quarterbacks. There's not really many quarterbacks I would go with. Um, if you're drafting Geno Smith, you got some problems. So <laughs> uh, Geno, I don't really like Geno. I'm a Jeff fan. I just don't think he. Uh, is a good quarterback. I think if you're competing against Mark Sanchez and you haven't yet beat Mark Sanchez out, then there's some problems there. Um, EJ Manuel is going to probably be the guy in Buffalo, but there's a whole train wreck going on up there. They got a new coach, new everything, and um, Marone you know, likes to run the ball, but at the same time, you know, uh, they're going to have to throw it, and I don't know if Manuel's ready to do that yet. So he's a a deep pick. You know, he'll probably be able to get him in. Uh, if you're you have a 10 round uh, keeper league draft, I would probably take him in probably the 10th round. Um, there's really nobody else on the board uh, in terms of rookie quarterbacks that I would take. Tight ends, uh, you have Zach Sudfeld from New England. Uh, you have Zach Ertz. You have Tyler Eifert. All are very good receiving tight ends. Um, Sudfeld. Some people are saying he's going to get a lot of catches this year and a lot of targets. Uh, because of the Gronkowski um, injury and also the Aaron Hernandez situation. I don't think that's going to be the case. I don't think he's going to get a ton of catches. I think they're going to spread the ball around, and it's going to be a um, kind of a split between all these receivers and him. So he could, but, I mean, if I was drafting, I wouldn't take him until very late. Um, I think Eifert and I also think Ertz have more upside as far as their cap their ability. I think Tyler Eifert is definitely a steal later in the draft. Um, he's a good young tight end, and I think he has more athleticism. But again, uh, is um, Andy Dalton going to be able to get him the ball? I, I still am not sold on that Cincinnati uh, passing game. Um, in terms of wide receivers, the only real wide receiver that I am considering or I would consider um, in my draft is Tavon Austin with the Rams. Um, he looks to be a guy that they brought in to be a big playmaker. However, he's kind of undersized. So he may be a big playmaker, but I think eventually once the NFL gets around him and understands you know, how they can you know, play him, I don't think he's going to be very effective. So. If you need to draft a wide receiver, I would really open up the book and take a look and see who's out there. Maybe some free agents or something like that. There's always wide receiver free agents out there. Um, but Tavon Austin, if you, unless you're in desperate need of a receiver, I wouldn't take him. Um, so overall, tonight when I do the draft, I'm going to sit down with a nice beer, and I'm going to look and see what's going on. Obviously, I have the first overall pick, so I'll set the tone for the draft. Um, like I said, right now, it looks like my top four um, are going to be uh, Bernard Bell, Ball and Lacey, and if you're sitting in your draft, and uh, especially for keeper leagues where you're drafting, 
rookies and free agents. I mean, either one of those four picks isn't a bad pick. It's going to pay dividends for you right away. I think it's the second tier running backs that could be surprises. The Christine Michaels, the Marcus Lattimore's, the Zach Stacy's. Um, there are a couple other guys out there that you could look at. But overall, if you're drafting at that point, I don't think there's really any way you could go bad. Um, if you're not really sold on people and you could trade down in the draft, um, I would recommend that. I, I've tried to trade down in the draft, maybe get the second or third or even the fourth pick um, because I knew that I would be able to get at least one of those guys. Um, but my trade offers have been pretty pathetic and they haven't really enticed me to even want to make that move. So tonight, um, I'm hoping... You know, I'll definitely get one of those guys, but I'm hoping it pans out. If you have any questions, if you want to email me any questions about your team or anything like that, feel free to email me at Corey42080 at yahoo.com. That's C-O-R-E-Y 42080 at yahoo.com.